I'm here, folks. How you doing today? Oh, hello, how you doing? I am, um, you know, watching the information dealing with the, uh, the, the oil supply, and it's just sad, but um, all the more reason to keep your garden going, because you're going to need to save money from your grocery bill to go towards your fuel now. It's interesting. Attack on the oil supply. And they use drones to do it. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I, I just think that um we're gonna have to be very careful. I got um, a whole ton of um, uh, things growing in the yard just to make certain that my family and I have, have food. Tomorrow I'll go out and I'll do some more. And I found um, that all of my fruit trees are doing extremely well. Could, could you know, be a little bigger, one or two of my trees, but they're, they're on schedule. They just, they're just doing great. And uh, so that's that's what I'm that's where I'm at right now. And I gotta feed this old bird, Ugh. so he's gonna take he's gonna take um, you know uh, nourishment from my my bill, <laughs> but he's well worth it. He, I found him out in the alley. Yeah, I know, I know. I found him out in the alley when uh, somebody was somebody was trying to kill him, so I found him and. Um, and gave my home, gave my home. Now he's all clean and fluffy, smells good. <laughs> all right, get down, get down. He's begging for something to eat right now, but I don't I don't like him to bully me and to feed him right away when he wants to. I let him wait a couple minutes. He's all right. He's about, uh, I want to say about 15, maybe, maybe 20 pounds. It's a kind of big breed of cat. But uh, what I'm doing right now is, um, I'm finding every single thing that grows well on my piece of property. Uh, some things I'm not going to be able to grow uh, for one reason or another. They don't do well in this environment. Uh, or um, some things require a great, great, great deal of care. And so those things I try not to grow. Something that says must water every 10 minutes. I won't, I won't put those in. Something that says... Um, must make certain that the soil is uh, done a certain way. Hi, morning gardener. Hello, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Green organic <laughs> love. Interesting name. Uh, and and I want to say, if you if you have the time and you have the the uh, the spirit to do it, 
you can definitely uh, grow some great looking vegetables. I, I like I like one thing uh, that, I, that I learned this year. Here's what I learned this year. Um, I bought about eight years ago. I was, it, was it eight years ago, six, seven, eight years ago. I bought a couple of raspberry plants, just raspberry plants. And I must have found the right species that does well in my my uh, my yard because I put down I want to say maybe two or three plants, and I put them down, and folks, those sun guns took off. Oh, happy Monday to you! Happy yes, happy Monday. Um, and when I put the the uh, I said, well, first I bought I bought one called Brandy Wine. That was a blackish sort of uh, raspberry. Didn't do well at all. Plus, it was growing these little tiny thorns, which I hate. I put another one in called um, uh, Fall Gold. That didn't do well. It, it produced a very, very healthy plant. And found out later that it grew these weird thorns. I mean, these suckers get in your hand, and they stay there. They stay there. They do not. You, you, they're so small, once they go in, you can't really get them out. You can scratch at them and, and, and try to find a, a sewing needle or something to really, but it gets in it. It's itches like I don't know what, it hurts a little bit. Um, so I hate those. I got rid of those. Um, and they, they were easy to get rid of. I have techniques when I want to get rid of a plant. I can I can do it just like that, and and it'll it'll definitely succumb. Um, the other thing is. Um, Uh, another one was called black raspberry and that died it just died it didn't do well at all uh but the ones that i bought originally 10 years ago eight or ten years ago um put it in just took off and i put it over in the part of the yard at that time folks at that time had the worst soil it was hard it was clay and i should dig over in that that side of the yard for my fishing worm for some reason the dark clay i mean excuse me not the dark clay the, the the clay which didn't grow very much in that area at one time had the prettiest and the biggest night crawlers you ever want to see and i'm going to tell you where i think they came from these night crawlers were probably not there until i started adding them there when i would go fishing i would come over to my compost pile and I would take my fishing worm and I would dump them in the um, the area where uh, they could live in my compost pile. They migrated out of there over to that area which is about six, seven feet away. And, and they are the biggest, and I mean, they are so alive that when you go to dig, they will pull under the ground real quick and, and they're massive. What they look like, um, they look like to me like baby snakes. That's how big they are. Um, and I look at them and I go, "Wow, this is one. These are big, huge worms. They don't even fit on the uh, fishing hook that well." But I would keep adding them as I went fishing. I would go to Walmart and buy uh, the Canadian uh, night crawlers, and I would empty them on the ground and in my compost pile, and they would just go. They would just live. They would. They would do well. Um, so that being said, I, I did a lot of um, uh, improving that soil in that area, uh, dumping mounds of leaves in that area, uh, mounds and mounds of leaves. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely, like a purplish color. But but the thing about it was the the the, the soil that I keep adding all this organic matter to started to improve, and the raspberries did extremely well. The raspberries did well. Uh, they, I mean, and I paid a little bit a little bit of money for these raspberries because they were like uh, they were throwing them out at the end of the year. God, I love that when they do that. Mm. Let me just let me just get over this for a moment, folks. Seven, eight, nine dollars a box heads towards summer. 
they stop, they, they, they just leave the plants up there and I go to the store manager and say, excuse me, sir, the plants that you have up in back, the ones that are basically dying, you got to add that word in there, dying or dead or almost dead or, um, what, what are you asking for? And he said, well, the dollar box, I go up there and clean up. Uh, so I got the uh, two or three boxes of the um, raspberries, put them in the ground. Nine, uh, see, nine, ten, uh, five or six years later, they're everywhere. Then uh, ten years later, they're all over the place. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, backyard, backyard garden. Uh, green Organic Love and DDS Pharmacy. Pharmacy, I think that's what it is. Uh, let's see what we got here. You can barely see it there. I am really getting... Oh, I'm thinking about LASIK. Uh, anyway. Here's where I'm at. I found more luck with going to Lowe's getting a discount. Uh, when I would go to Home Depot, Sometimes they will pull that old, uh, well, let me go to the book. And they actually go to a book and say, I can only knock 20% off. And I hate that because what I should have did is went right to the uh, garden manager. Because he can make decisions. He can say, throw this out or here is free. Uh, he can make that decision, he or she. So what happened is the raspberries, were growing extremely well this year. They're all around my peach tree, no, excuse me, pear tree. They're all around my pear tree, folks. Beautiful, beautiful plants. I did very little to them this year. I didn't, I didn't even cut them back, you know, when it come into spring. I didn't cut them back, I didn't do anything. I just simply sprinkled down around them some organic, uh, uh, what do they call that stuff? Some, some, some organic fertilizer. The berries were bigger. They were sweeter this year. And normally I get them anyway. But this year they were bigger and sweeter. There was a lot of them. There was more of them. So I said, okay, repeat the same thing next year. Repeat the same thing next year. You want berries. You want juicy, sweet berries. When you don't fertilize them, folks, they're not sweet. Very, well, they're not very sweet. They're not. So I, I now know that if you, if you, hello, everyone, 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 Angela, hello, how you doing? Uh, busy Bee Garden and Homesteaded. Yeah, okay. I'm doing good, folks. My fuel pump to my car came in today. And I now view that part a lot differently than I ever did in the future. Once a car gets, and I have a couple cars that got over 100,000 miles on, and when the town car started to die, it was weird how I was doing it. just kept cutting off, and it was driving slow, and I didn't know what was wrong with the car. Found out by doing some research that fuel pumps are like a maintenance item. It's just an electric pump that is in either... The, the underneath of your car or it's in the um, the fuel tank. And most in fuel injected cars is in the fuel tank. So I went online, I did you know, looking around, I found a fuel pump and I, I'm putting it in the car, get it done tomorrow. Yeah. But it came in the mail today. I don't buy anything from the uh, brick and mortar stores like a car parts unless I have to. You know, if it's an emergency, I'll get it there. But if not, I go online. I see morning garden. Do you think organic uh, turkey turkey poo is a good fertilizer for berry bushes? Absolutely, it is. It, it absolutely it is. You got to remember, <clears throat> man was the only one that made gardening difficult for us to understand. They the only ones done it because they made it. They made a profit off of it. So anytime they get an opportunity, they hire a person, a female or male, to get on in front of you and say, hello, how you doing? The, the only way to grow this, and hold it up and say, the only way to grow this plant 
is you must make certain that you use Dan's Organic Fertilizer. Dan Organic Fertilizer has the wonder and the beauty that it takes to bring this flower out and, and grow lots of food. That's what they do. And it confuses the hell out of you. <clears throat> so you run into the store and you will only give your garden Dan's Fertilizer. Now, if you ever actually knew what that stuff is, it's just farm waste. A lot of the fertilizers are farm waste. The feathers are grounded up, the chicken poo is grounded up, the cow or, 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 or the horse or whatever, they, they ground it up and, and heated and cooked to cook keep down bacteria. And then they put it in a bag and they shape it a certain way or give it a certain color and they sell it to you. And you run out and buy it, then God knows it's marked up in cost. They want the cost. I mean, it's trash, basically, from the farm industry. A lot of it is. Not all of it, but uh, uh, a lot of it's just farm waste. Because uh, we, we produce a lot of, of uh, stuff from uh, chicken beets and, and trash and poo and everything, and they use that stuff. Now, farmers have been using cow waste forever and a day. Some of them got big swimming pools of it on their property. And they pump it out, pump it onto a truck, drive to the location pump that stuff all across the field and everything grows like crazy because the fertilizer has the content of the cow's stomach in it and uh and so it uses that to you know plants love it and the reason why plants love it is because the the uh the, the, the energy in the soil which is the the animal uh animals that live in the soil actually uh eat this and they excrete it and they live and die in those locations that the plants take them in. The plants only can eat uh, what they do is do that the uh, the, the uh, life that's in the soil that breaks it down so the plant can eat it. Um, plants are unique. Uh, they, they survive because they um, use the soil and they use the, the energy from the sun, you know, to process what they do. I think that it's interesting that um, that we still are trapped into thinking that gardening is complex, which it is not complex. It's the simplest thing in the world. You could actually take in some really good fertile soil in the right location. Uh, you could take some beans and throw them out into the yard, and they'll come up on their own. Not all of them, but they'll come up on their own. Um, same thing with the tomato. Throw a tomato out in the yard at the right time of year. It'll hit the ground and bust open, and it'll come up on its own. How does it do that? Because nature designed it to uh, to survive. Um, and if the right conditions are there, it will grow on its own. But we don't need to go. Um, and, and, and they tell you a lot of stuff in these books. That, some of the books I used to get uh, back in the day, which I, I, don't, I don't get these books anymore. I do not use gardening books. I just don't. They're too confusing. Uh, one thing I, I know is, is that uh, I've been doing it long enough to uh, understand that when the, the books that I had back in the day would tell you things like till the ground, uh, which is dead wrong. It would tell you to till. Uh, it would tell you use fertilizers like 10, 10, 10, which that's man-made. So it, it was just giving you information. So from that foundation, it started off wrong. Uh, I, I just I had to get rid of that book. I had to get rid of it. I had to learn things like uh, uh, I go out into the forest and I look around and I look and see why is everything here growing absolutely beautiful and no one's fertilizing it and no one's pruning it and no one's out there watering it. How is this done like this? And I said, I got to find out how nature does it. So I spent a lot of years just studying how nature did it. And now that's what I use. I do not worry about uh what somebody wrote on the back of a pack um, because they're giving you information so they can uh, sometimes keep you kind of in the dark and they can make money off of you. Um, I see all kind of ads and you see them too. They're little bottles and they call them super grow, uh, overgrown, and they, they, they're fertilizers. All it is is somebody put together a formula that they feel will work. They said, uh, let's see, I'm going to use a little cow poo, oh, a little bat guano, uh, ooh, fish emulsion and they shake that stuff up and they use it for a while and know that it works relatively well and then they sell it to you as they call it they might call it overgrown vegetables or something like that anything that spark your interest to make you go 
I better try that. Or they'll show you a plant next to it that they'll say, here is the one that's grown with this product, and here's the one that's grown with, with the regular stuff. And and they know what they did to that plant to make one look dwarfed and the other one look big. And and they, they make it a sucker out of you. And they dunk, I know because I've been there, they've done it to me. So, um, and it's so easy to do. Um, and everyone is telling you, all this information is all over the place when it comes to gardening. Everybody's lost because it's like all this information and it's some of it. And they tell you stuff. And you hear words that these really word certain things. They say, this will only grow with this. And this will only grow if you use this. And they're telling you that, which was, that's a lie right there when they tell you only can grow it. Because there are many different ways to grow things. Many different ways to grow things. No, not all fertilizers are organic. Because everyone has a different definition of what they call organic. The same thing they do with uh, organic food. Uh, they could grow uh, seeds in the ground and call it organic, for instance, if the seeds are organic, but then they use man-made chemicals to grow it. So <laughs> so is it organic or is it not organic? Uh, so they, they do what they got to do. They do what they got to do to make that money. These colorful bags in the store, beautiful pictures of vegetables on a bag, a professional photographer. Put spray bottle on it, make the the, the the dew drip off the apple, and take that picture, and 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 then they put it on the, the bag, or they put it in a book, and, and you go buy it because they must stimulate you into making that transaction. They don't care whether or not you grow anything, but if you look at the old farmers back in the day, the only thing the old farmers did wrong when they got about late 60s, 70s, is they started using a lot of man-made chemicals. That's the only thing they did wrong. And then the one thing they did wrong all the way back in the past was they kept tilling. And they would till a piece of land for so many years. And if they didn't treat the land right, then the land would get poor, poor, poor. And they didn't know what was going on. So they moved somewhere else and start farming. And and um, the um, the thing about it is farmers, farmers definitely uh, learn a lot. Uh, the ones that have learned and say we must we must farm the way nature intended for us to farm, not these monocrops where you just grow corn and beans every every so often and that's all you grow there because it's going to suck all the main minerals out that's for those and you're going to have a problem. Um, but uh, using using crop residue, leave it on the ground. They just started doing that. They started, uh, you know, using a lot of, uh, uh, they call them cover crops, and with m m multiple different types of plants in that cover crop, seeds when they put it down, so that each plant adds some benefit to the soil. Um, so that's smart. Um, collecting water instead of using uh, water from, uh, you know, man-made water, I call it, when they add all these bleaches and chemicals to the water and you spray the crops with it. And when you spray the crops with it, you're killing the biology in the soil. Uh, you know, I've had people ask me over, over the years, uh, you know, say, Morning Gardener, why is it that you do not use water from your house? I said, because the water from my house contains a lot of chemicals. And the biology, and, 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 and the water actually is designed to kill biology. This was designed for the water that you use in your house kills biology. So when you put that on your soil, it kills the biology. Um, so why would I want to, if I have another choice, why would I use water from my house? Uh, I got a tomato in the ground. I started using water. And then all of a sudden, tomatoes growing extremely slow. Why? Because every time the bacteria comes into that area, it's killed off by, by you watering it. So it just keeps coming into the area, you know, so you get some tomatoes. But the uh, rainwater doesn't have those chemicals in it that are added uh, just to kill the bacteria. They don't, it just, it's not there. And I think that it, the, the more natural you could grow something, the better off it'll be. Uh, let me give you a good example. Um, 
if you had rabbits, if you had rabbits, you would do extremely well because rabbits would definitely. Uh, but but then again, you got to go back. It depends on what you're feeding your rabbit. Because if you're buying uh, rabbit food from the store, which is sometimes man-made, you're going to get out of the rabbit what you put in the rabbit. So some people find out diets that work for rabbits that's completely natural, and they give that to the rabbits. Whether it be grass or weeds, certain weeds or plants, they give that to the rabbit, and, and the rabbit ingests that, and, and, and that's what comes out of the other end. It's quality. When it got him. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, absolutely. George Washington Carver. Yes. Yes. Um, soil, you must put back in it what you take out. You cannot, you cannot keep eating the apple and, and it, you know, because when you eat, the, here's what you're eating when you're eating uh, apples, when you're eating tomatoes, when you're eating beans, when you're eating uh, lettuce and, and, and kale and all that, you're eating your soil. You're eating your soil is what you're eating. When you have soil that is loaded, packed with, with all kinds of uh, good uh, uh, minerals and, and, and life in it, and you eat that, you will become healthier, stronger, because your soil is stronger. Lots of bacteria in it. I love it when I go into my on my on my property, folks. And this this gives me a really great feeling. You have to excuse me for becoming so passionate about it because. Um, when I look through my soil, I see all these little insects running around on my soil, and I see spiders, and and I see these. Uh, 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 they look like a beetle. I can't call a name. I can never call a name. Isopods, I believe is what they call isopods. Um, they're crawling, and I see ants, and I see um, uh, crickets, and I see. Uh, and, and when I take the. Uh, uh, the, 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 the manure fork and I just lift it folks remember I said I don't turn my soul over I do not turn my soul over I don't care I don't do it but I lift it go back four inches lift it go back four inches lift it eight inches deep and I'm ready to put my plants in now I have found a way using the manure fork the manure fork folks I can go out to a yard covered with, with weeds everywhere and here's what I do. I go out, stick that fork down eight inches. Back it. Just pull it down by the handle. Come back four inches, stick it down again eight inches. Pull it back. And I'll go back as far as I want to go. Then go to the row right next to it. Right next to it. And do the same thing. I grab my rake. Well, my hand, depending on how, how bigger area I need to, you know, to do. And I grab my rake and I just put it up there at the top and rake away all of that weeds and everything. I just rake and it comes down to black soil. And I'm not talking about raking deep. I'm talking about just scraping the surface to, to the, the weeds will be so loose. The weeds will be so loose. You can literally just wipe them away with the rake. I know what I'm talking about. And when you do that, leave the weeds right there on the on the soil leave them right there on the soil and they're going to do nothing when you come back in a few days they're going to turn all brown and they're headed where folks right back into the ground why would i want to uh, uh mess up that balance when the food for my very own garden is right there it's right there i don't need to, to keep um uh uh buying uh straw to put down and and buying uh, all kinds of uh, uh, compost, going to the dump, buying uh, um, uh, what do you call it? compost, load my truck up, working the hell out of myself, bringing in somebody else's material to my property. I don't want to do that. And I don't trust it because <clears throat> when the city goes around, they pick up those leaves in the fall in the bags that you set out. The um, the city comes to get them, 
your neighbors sweep them up out of the curbs. Your neighbors sweep them uh, up from around their property. Maybe they got disease and all kind of stuff in their property. Maybe they got, um, like I said, the oil and grease from the ground, and they rake that stuff up. And you put that in your yard when they send it off to the the uh, these companies, and they process that stuff. All they're trying to do is speed it up to make it break down faster. Because composting will happen with or without you. It don't need you anyway to be uh, to compost. But you bring the um, leaves to this plant. They break it all down, grass clippings or whatever. And sometimes people spray chemicals in their grass to kill weeds. And you and they bring that to the to the uh, facility, and and they cook that down 160, 180 uh, degrees. They cook it all down. They keep turning it and turning it and turning it. And then you go buy that in a bag when the spring comes, and they call it um, leaf mold and that sort of thing. And you buy this stuff from Home Depot and Lowe's and, and, and Walmart. And you buy this stuff, and you put it in your yard. No, you don't need to do that. Why would you want to go through all that and spend all that money for what? I, and the only reason I can think of is some people just don't know. Uh, uh, but... You already have it there. When nature drops those leaves on your property in the fall and you rake them up and throw them away, uh, you're actually hurting your soil. You're actually removing nutrients from that tree. That's what you're doing. And I know you want to have a clean, pretty property, but if you got an area in the back or an area where you could you could you could pile that stuff up at, you can pile it up. In the in the spring, you're gonna have all this, and you don't you don't even need to use the lawnmower to Ground it up if you don't want to. It's going to break down regardless. I used to get, uh, back in the day, I used to get leaves delivered to my property, eight, 900 pounds of it. And you can't even move that many leaves by yourself. Um, but we would drag it with a tractor and a tarp to the location I needed. And, and I got tired of a guy coming here because he was running over my trees and running up on my good part of my earth that I used to plant my uh, uh, my vegetables and he's impacting my soil with the heavy tractor and i said i gotta stop this this is something not right about this what he's doing uh, if i'm not home he'll he'll drive it up in there and drop it and, and, and one time a guy dropped some stuff and it was just full of just vines and i said oh my god no he didn't i told him not to do this so i called him up and told him i'll take no more drops from you none at all sir thank you for what you did drop um so he knew when he put that many weeds in there and what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. Uh, let's see, plants on uh, over winter produce better. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they do. Once you, uh, if you overwinter, uh, say for instance, pepper plants. Pepper plants are great to overwinter. You got to bring them in a warm house. You can't let your house get cold. And then you got to put them in the air and they get some sun. Um, and they're going to fall back a little, but then you just kind of, you know, don't overwater them and make sure you give them a, a, you know, a little bit of feed every once in a while, and, and they should do fine. Uh, you put them in the ground, they immediately take off because they're already mature plants. Uh, yeah, you can do that with pepper plants, all kind of pepper plants. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm in zone 7B. The zone I'm in. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Don't, don't, don't ever worry about it. Ask any questions you like. Uh, I live and breathe this stuff, I always say. Um, I use weeds to grow my garden. I use grass to grow my garden. Um, and when I sometimes when I cut my lawn, because I don't really care about my lawn. I just cut it and make sure it's neat. And um, when I cut my grass, I get me a 32-gallon plastic container, garbage can. And I rake all the grass clippings up in there and I go over and dump them where I need them, whether it be around my fruit trees or my my, my bushes or whatever. And that's just food, folks. That's food. I don't play around. I've learned the secret of gardening, which is use what you got to get what you need, which is tree branches, grass clippings, weeds, uh, um, leaves, all of that's food to the, for the garden. Oh, okay, uh, 9B, California. Okay. Okay. And I grow, uh, my, my fruit trees are just beautiful, folks. They're beautiful. 
The only problem if I had to complain about anything is that my dwarf fruit trees get too big. Um, and that, okay, you're, you're in 7 8. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go, Angela. And I'm telling you, y'all, y'all are just, y'all sound like serious uh, uh, farmers. Because. <laughs> To be up this time of night getting this, getting this information and you passing all information, that's what you want to do. You want to do that. Because, I mean, eating great food, not just eating greens and, and, and uh, what they call it, greens and, and fruit, but eating great food. The best food I've ever eaten that was grown was right from my own yard. And that is the truth. Oh, that's the call I was waiting for, folks. This is the Morning Gardener. Thank you very much, and remember to keep on growing.